This video is sponsored by Surfshark. The Matrix Resurrections is upon us, and naturally, it screened early for professional critics. The reviews were decidedly on the mixed side, but one review stood out from all the others and got all the more traction for it. That would be IndieWire's David Ehrlich, who tweeted, The Matrix Resurrections, despite and because of its infinite goofiness, is the boldest and most vividly personal Hollywood sequel since The Last Jedi. This tweet served the dual purpose of telling all of Ehrlich's fellow activist friends in the industry that they will approve of the movie, while signaling to everyone else to abandon all hope. You see, Star Wars The Last Jedi has proven to be a benefit to audiences in a way not intended by Lucasfilm, as it's now the perfect barometer to assess if something is subversive crap or not, so if it can be compared with The Last Jedi, you know it can't be good for audiences. That a Star Wars movie can be used in such a manner is of course no surprise to fans of Star Wars, but there are many other fandoms who are only learning of this concept now, as their favorite properties are getting the Last Jedi treatment. In this video then, we will, as a public service, reiterate to those who came in late to the party exactly what The Last Jedi did, and why most people would consider that bad if that treatment were applied to anything they like. Further illustrating the point, We'll apply it to some other franchises, where the fan base either is in the process of or soon about to learn what it really means, namely The Wheel of Time, Sex in the City, and Lord of the Rings. Finally, we'll look into what happens after The Last Jedi treatment has been applied. As we look into the current state of Star Wars, shortly before the premiere of Book of Boba Fett on Disney+. Plus. Over the course of watching this video, many a fan may get upset with what's happening to their favorite franchises and feel the urge to cancel their Prime Video Max Plus whatever subscription because why pay for this frustration and take to the high seas instead? Please note that this is something neither Midnight's Edge, our sponsors, nor any other affiliates condones. Not only is piracy wrong, but you would be exposing yourself to endless spyware, tracking software, and other malware out there on the high seas. And that's on top of all the data that's stolen from you during all of your regular browsing. Well, modern problems require modern solutions and many of them can be found in a VPN, such as the one delivered by this channel's sponsor, Surfshark. A VPN, or Virtual Private Network, is a privacy protection tool which guarantees instant online safety and encrypts all data sent via the internet. On top of that, Surfshark allows you to bypass geo-blocking restrictions by changing the country you access the internet from, which also gives you access to 15 different Netflix libraries by simply changing your virtual location. Not only that, outside of the US, Star, the international version of Hulu, comes bundled with Disney+. Plus. If you're in the US and change your location to, say, the UK, well, then you just might get that too. One of the advantages with Surfshark over many other VPN providers is that it allows one account to be used on unlimited devices. That's part of the reason why Surfshark is the VPN of our choice. And it gets even better. If you type in the code MIDNIGHT when ordering, that triggers an exclusive offer in which you now get 83% off the normal list price, plus four extra months for free. That's right, in a time-limited offer, you now get four extra months for free. Surfshark also offers a 30-day money-back guarantee, so there's no risk in trying it out. Do check out the link in the description below for further details and to order. With that, let's briefly recap for newcomers what giving something like the Star Wars The Last Jedi treatment actually means. When The Last Jedi was released in 2018, it subjected the Star Wars franchise to a mean-spirited deconstruction, only to give it an ideological-driven makeover. For generations of audiences, Luke Skywalker had been a hero, an everyman who was thrust into an extraordinary situation and was forced to grow and mature to become a better version of himself. He was the perfect distillation of the proverbial hero who had to undertake the hero's journey, seen in myths from every culture on Earth and stories told around the campfire since the dawn of time. His order was the Jedi. They were good and represented the light, and they fought evil. And as a result of this universal appeal, Star Wars was loved by generation after generation across the world. But not everyone loved it, and with The Last Jedi, someone intent on tearing down cultural institutions set out to subvert expectations and reshape the Star Wars franchise according to their liking. To this end, the hero Luke Skywalker, now an old man, was made to be a pathetic, miserable, bitter loser, and the Jedi were made out to be, at best, misguided, and at worst, evil. The fans were told that their love for this franchise was problematic and that their heroes and stories of the past needed to be buried to make way for a more diverse and female-centric change of direction. 
To this end, the baton of series lead would be passed to an innately perfect new hero that needed no journey. The changes were of a nature that would please radical social justice activists, but in the process, they ended up putting off the built-in audience. Consider the comic meme of the person standing outside the fanbase, demanding changes to suit them, which caused everyone else to leave, only for them to afterwards leave as well because they never cared about the property in question. This is what happened with Star Wars The Last Jedi. The end result was a subversion of the cash flow Star Wars generated for Disney because it caused the audience to flee en masse. This is, of course, well known and a repetition for Star Wars fans, but fans of Robert Jordan's Wheel of Time are learning what The Last Jedi treatment means in practice right now. The Wheel of Time is a series of high fantasy novels by American author Robert Jordan, which draws on numerous elements of both European and Asian mythology, most notably the cyclical nature of time found in Buddhism and Hinduism, the metaphysical concepts of balance and duality, and a respect for nature found in Taoism. When a live-action series adaptation was announced for Amazon, many were excited for it, only to realize upon seeing the finished product that there was no reason to. What's more, there never really was. To illustrate what happened with Wheel of Time, one only needs to look at the series' development history at Amazon. Before Amazon had acquired the Wheel of Time rights, they were already developing a series based on Robert E. Howard's Conan the Barbarian from showrunner Ryan Condal. That series was shaping up to be excellent, until the two executives who had greenlit it were me tooed out of the company. They were replaced by one Jennifer Sulky, and her job wasn't just to change Amazon's culture so there would be no more such allegations, but also to give Amazon's original movie and series output an overhaul to ensure everything was on message. To this end, the Conan the Barbarian series was cancelled. Not because it was bad, quite the contrary. The series by all accounts looked set to be excellent, but extremely true to the spirit of original author Robert E. Howard. There was one problem. A Conan series true to its source material was off-message for Amazon, due to the quote-unquote toxic masculinity on display, which was so fundamentally interwoven into the series that it could not be removed. Hence, Salki cancelled Conan and instead proceeded with another series that they had been developing, namely The Wheel of Time. Robert Jordan's original books are inherently closer to female-centric, and far away from those of Robert E. Howard, though apparently not far enough for Salki's liking. Further changes in the same vein also applied to The Last Jedi were applied to The Wheel of Time. Echoing how The Matrix Resurrections was likened to The Last Jedi, Slate.com, a publication that is generally in favor of The Last Jedi-style makeovers, deemed The Wheel of Time to be better than Game of Thrones. Unless you're referring to only Season 8, that is a sentiment few share. On the whole, audiences at large, and fans of the books in particular, are quite disappointed with the Wheel of Time. They aren't the only fandoms feeling this way, for just like that, we transition to Sex and the City. <laughs> you serious? Yes. HBO Max's And Just Like That is the highly anticipated latest installment of the Sex and the City franchise. That is, it might not have been highly anticipated with all of our viewers, but those who overlap with the Sex and the City audience know what we're talking about. The return of Carrie Bradshaw had fans excited initially. The series had always and deliberately had what some might call a coastal elite liberal bent, but in Just Like That, this was turned up to 11. The series didn't just go woke, it went out of its way to celebrate woke culture to the point where the series mainstays spent the first episode almost breaking the fourth wall, apologizing to viewers for not having been woke enough, but promising to do better now. It played well with some in the media, but fans criticized the series for being too woke and too cringe, for killing off Mr. Big and widowing Carrie, for effectively replacing Samantha with they, and for possibly making Miranda break up with Steve and enter a relationship with them. One would not think a franchise like Sex and the City would ever have a Last Jedi of its own, but here we are. If there's one property where the Last Jedi treatment being applied has been signaled loud and clear, it's Amazon's in-development Lord of the Rings. The series, show run by Bad Robots, J.D. Payne, and Patrick McKay, none of whom who have any former credits of any particular note, is set to be the single most expensive TV series of all time, bar none. $250 million was spent just buying the TV rights, and Amazon have committed to a five-season run in a deal worth another billion. 
In order to assure a universal hit with all audiences, the series has touted its diversity in front of and behind the camera. Presumably, this will also apply to the storytelling itself, now that a certain seminar to that end has read much of many messages into Tolkien that no one mysteriously had picked up on before, thereby providing academic cover. It is still very early days where the Lord of the Rings series is concerned, so we'll return with more info on that in due time. But it seems likely that it might not be much better received by audiences other than the other series we've looked at. With that, let's look at what the future might hold for franchises where The Last Jedi treatment has been applied by looking back towards Star Wars. From the first to the last installment of the sequel trilogy, the box office was cut in half. Such was the power of The Last Jedi. It marks the turning point where all the arrows on Star Wars went from pointing up to pointing down, signaling the point where Star Wars became a franchise in decline. At this point, four years after The Last Jedi, and two years after the last theatrical Star Wars installment, no more Star Wars movies are in active development or gearing up for a shoot, meaning there won't be another Star Wars feature film for years to come still. The future of the box office behemoth Star Wars once was is for the foreseeable future on the small screen on Disney+. The Last Jedi had the goal for tearing down the past, something which was explicitly stated in the movie, and it succeeded all too well in tearing down its own foundations. Now, however, that foundation has to be rebuilt, and ironically, the future beyond The Last Jedi was a creative dead end. The actual future of Star Wars ironically lies in the very past The Last Jedi tried so hard to destroy. The latest rumor making the rounds is that the upcoming Book of Boba Fett will feature the return of both Baby Yoda and a de-aged Harrison Ford, perhaps signaling a restoration of Han Solo the way The Mandalorian restored Luke Skywalker. The true legacy of The Last Jedi is the destruction it wrought upon the Star Wars franchise, and if there are any lessons to take away from it, it should be that subverting any franchise the way Star Wars was subverted may please some reviewers and activists, but it won't please the audience, and the audience are the ones who ultimately pay the bills. Do you think the powers that be might also figure this out? Let us know in the comments, and remember that to help protect your data, bypass quarrelsome geo-blocking restrictions and more, you should get Surfshark VPN. Use our code MIDNIGHT to get 83% off plus 4 extra months for free. Link is in the description.